Welcome to the Healthy Podcast, presented by Melrose Wakefield Healthcare. My name is Rob Branya, and I'm pleased to welcome today's guests, Dr. Salvatore Nardello, Surgical Breast Oncologist with Tufts Medical Center Community Care and Medical Director of the Melrose Wakefield Breast Health Center in Stoneham, and Dr. Abhishek Chatterjee, Surgical Oncologist and Chief of the Division of Plastic Surgery at Tufts Medical Center in Boston and Associate Professor of Surgery at Tufts University School of Medicine. Dr. Nardello and Dr. Chatterjee, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Today, we're talking about breast cancer. Uh, in particular, we'll be discussing surgical treatments, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't take a few moments to give some attention to the importance of prevention and early detection of breast cancer. Um, Dr. Nardello? This is a really hot topic, and I'm very happy to hear that it is. Breast cancer detection leads to early treatment and better outcomes. So you will often read or see in the news that you may not need a mammogram until the age of 50. We discourage mammograms until getting them every two years, and they suggest stopping at age 70 or 74. And through the American Society of Breast Surgeons, we strongly advocate women start mammograms at age 40. Unless you have a family history or have had previous breast issues, at that point, we would recommend mammograms earlier. And I strongly encourage everybody to talk with their OBGYNs or PCPs about that. I also encourage women to do their own monthly self-breast exams, to talk to their primary care physicians and OBGYNs about doing clinical exams, at least on a yearly basis, because women are their best advocates and you know your bodies better than anybody else out there. So if you notice something, whether it be a new lump or nipple discharge or a breast pain that's unexplained or any pain in the armpit, that's something that you should bring to your doctor because Again, women know their bodies better than anybody, and at that point, we would recommend doing a mammogram and potentially an ultrasound. In addition to that, you know, just to add on to what uh, Sam was saying, uh, if you have a family relative who had breast cancer, um, you should typically get the mammogram at least 10 years sooner than that family relative had gotten breast cancer. So, for example, if your mother had breast cancer at 45, then typically the recommendations are you should start your annual mammograms at 35. So it does matter who and at what age your family relatives have had breast cancer, and hopefully they didn't, but you should always look out for that as well. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, and to follow up, treatment varies from case to case, patient to patient, but is there a typical path that newly diagnosed patients would follow? Um, when you talk about surgery, chemo, radiation, how is all that determined? So, you know, whenever someone gets a diagnosis of breast cancer, they're petrified. Most of the times, these are women who've done absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, in fact, all the times, no one's done anything wrong to get breast cancer, obviously. So when they get the diagnosis, they're typically a mother or a sister or a daughter or a wife who's gone about their business and they've had a mammogram or they've incidentally found a, a mass on their breast. And basically, they're, they've, given, they've gotten a biopsy um, once that's happened. So a, a small piece of tissue has been taken, and it's been seen that that woman has breast cancer. At that point, panic arrives, and the woman comes about and gets referred by the primary care doctor to uh, her uh, breast surgeon. And so the first point of contact typically is with doctors like uh, Sam and myself. And so in this circumstance, they come in and we take them through the journey of breast cancer, which involves a multidisciplinary approach. And I always tell my patients that um, a lot of most people will survive this. And it's because of the fine care uh, that we get from not only the surgeons, but the medical oncologists, the radiation oncologists, and the team of pathologists and radiologists. So there's a team taking care of this. There's just not one person. But typically the treatment plan, and you can chip in, Sam, is um, you know, I see the surgeon taking out the cancer physically, hopefully curing the patient at that point. But just for additional therapy, the medical oncologist then takes care of the patient or the radiation oncologist takes care of the patient. It really depends what type of cancer it is, but typically I have a team approach starting with a surgeon and then everyone else. I have to agree that nowadays, thankfully, breast cancer is often detected at an early stage and prognosis is excellent. And with a combined approach of not only the surgeon, the medical oncologist, the radiation oncologist, and all the other team members, as well as the family, women are doing better and better and better and have options in terms of what surgery they choose. 
and whether or not radiation would be required and whether or not chemotherapy or sometimes a pill taken for five to 10 years would be something that would be helpful. You typically get sent um, to what we call um, a breast cancer center. Certainly when our patients get diagnosed with breast cancer, they either um, basically go to Sam or myself, and we're located at these centers of excellence with regards to breast cancer care. The reason for that is he has and we have a team of people who are ready and specialized in breast cancer treatment. In other words, we've had additional training in breast cancer to really fight that disease. And we have that knowledge because we take care of these types of patients every day. Our team is ready to do that. So when they come to us, they have a breast surgeon who's up to date in the uh, nuances of all the evidence. And it's really complex as far as if you do Google search breast cancer, you will be inundated with so much uh, flawed literature and accurate literature, but you don't just know which one's right. So one of the advantages, one of the things I always tell my patients is wherever you go, make sure the doctors you see are doctors who deal with this all the time. And they should be ready to be on their A game, uh, telling you, this is your journey, this is who we are, this is our training. And we will take you through the entire journey step by step and, and guide you through not only the surgery, but what's to follow that, whether it's medical treatment, radiation, getting those specialists involved. And as surgeons, I would imagine that you're seeing more and more requests for preventive mastectomy. Um, Dr. Nardello? This is something that we do here, it usually comes after somebody undergoes genetic testing. And if they do test positive for a deleterious mutation, and Angelina Jolie popularized this by testing positive for the BRCA gene or the breast cancer gene, that is somebody who can discuss the option of a preventative mastectomy, which could be done to reduce one's risk of developing breast cancer by about 90 to 95%. This is clearly a difficult decision for a woman to make and something that clearly involves um, a multidisciplinary approach to their care and discussion. Yeah, I mean, Sam's absolutely right. When a woman, unfortunately, has the diagnosis of a breast cancer gene um, mutation, that can be the BRCA and other types, which are less frequent, then the, the issue of a, a mastectomy, not only on one side, but both sides have to at least be undertaken. The woman necessarily doesn't have to have it, but at least a discussion with the breast surgeon and even the plastic surgeon should take place. Fortunately, it's only 10% of genes, 10% of breast cancer cases out there are actually associated to a breast cancer gene. So the vast majority of initial breast cancer diagnoses are in women who don't have that gene, 90%. And so they're not doomed, if you will, to have a bilateral mastectomy. They can go with breast conservation surgery, which is a lot less invasive. Thankfully, here in the community, we have access to a plastic surgeon like Dr. Chatterjee so that we are able to offer these preventative mastectomies if that is something that a patient desires. And at the time of the mastectomy, we are able to offer breast reconstruction at that point. Great. Um, one of the great things we're seeing at Melrose Wakefield Healthcare is this incredible collaboration between Melrose Wakefield and Tufts Medical Center clinicians. Can you talk about that collaboration and how you're seeing that play out and what it means for patients who live here in suburban Boston? Dr. Chatterjee? Yeah. Um, you know, when I first started working with Sam, um, just as a breast surgeon and a plastic surgeon, you had to discuss what operations you offered. And um, both Sam and I were looking into this, not only the standard what we call lumpectomies when a woman has breast cancer that takes out a, a small area of tissue and just sews the skin over, or a big mastectomy where you remove the breast with reconstruction, we were looking into this newer technique called oncoplastic surgery. And uh, this requires, I think, um, the expertise of people who are specialized in breast, both from the oncologic resection where you remove the cancer, but also in the plastic surgery when you reconstruct the same breast using the same tissue. And so um, what's unique w with our practice when we set it out was um, we basically adhered to what we call the American Society of Breast Surgeons Guidelines, which is if a woman is eligible for breast conservation, well, darn it, we're going to do it. We don't have to remove the breast. And we found um, typically in the area and in the nation that typically uh, most people, not I take that back, a lot of people are going through mastectomies when in fact with the size of cancer that they have relative to the size of the breast that they have, they could probably go under breast conservation surgery, not have their breast removed. 
And so Sam and I got together and we said, well, let's look into this oncoplastic technique. Both of us have surgical oncology backgrounds. We share a passion for reconstruction without removing the breast. And so we started adopting the, the principle that if a woman came into our practice without being gene positive, we would try to save her breast. And in that process, not only use her own tissue once removing the cancer, using her own tissue from the same breast to reconstruct her, but also do less surgery on her and potentially making her not only cancer free, but feeling whole with one operation using her own tissue. And this I think is the unique practice but that both Sam and I have adopted practice patterns wise, which is slightly different to everyone else around. And this is a major paradigm shift and the patients of our community are very lucky and blessed uh, to have the ability to have this care locally with somebody like uh, Sunny Chatterjee because this is a complicated and complex procedure uh, and we're able to work with somebody who's nationally published on this and um, one of the leaders in the field in it being able to offer this technique uh, to women where we hear all the time that they go in with a diagnosis of breast cancer and come out feeling better than they did before they had the cancer or after they had the cancer. They feel better in terms of the way they look and they know that their cancer is out and they feel very comfortable with their appearance. That's exactly right. I mean, most of the data out there is basically seen and studied asking patients how they feel afterwards using these surveys. So while patients had this cancer, gone through the journey, they give this survey such as, and it's called different things like the breast cue, but they ask things uh, you, based on psychosocial wellness, uh, post-operative sexual well-being, how women see themselves in the mirror and how they feel whole. I mean, it's it's remarkable to me that decades ago we did these uh, very, very aggressive and scarring operations like the Halsteadian mastectomies where we used to also remove the muscle. Thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. But nowadays, this type of oncoplastic operation um, is really one of the few cancer operations where a lot of times the woman will go in and based on this type of breast she has, have the cancer resection, and potentially see herself from a breast form standpoint as looking better and feeling better than she did before having the cancer taken out. That's a remarkable operation if you think of it from a cancer standpoint. And are most women with breast cancer eligible to have this, or are there certain guidelines? The American Society of Breast Surgeons um, really has defined what oncoplastic surgery has. And it's, it's a whole range of operations. Um, and both at Melrose and at Tufts, we, we provide that whole range. A lot of places don't. And in this circumstance here, um, really most women who are having breast conservation surgery should have some element of oncoplastic surgery, whether it's removing the mass and using special techniques in plastic surgery to bring the local tissue together without having to work on the other side, and that's called level one oncoplastic surgery. I mean, the levels aren't important, but I'm just going through them to be thorough. And then there's level two oncoplastic surgery where you do have a woman who comes in, has very large breasts, either is, has back pain and neck pain before, before, uh, because of that. And in the process of removing the cancer, you use the, the large amount of remaining tissue to give her a breast reduction and make her feel whole, or a breast lift, if you will. A lot of times women have to pay for those operations, but in the cancer uh, situation, insurance does cover that by the Women's Cancer Act in, in 1998. They have to cover that. And so when you lift this breast up and give them a reduction on one side, you have to do the other side as well. And so she wakes up with a breast reduction or breast lift, but more importantly, that type of operation allows us to be more aggressive in taking the cancer out. So it's more aggressive than a lumpectomy because you take a lot more tissue out, but it's not as excessive as a mastectomy. And it's one operation using her own tissue rather than implants. And we know the scares out there right now for implants. And in turn, we can potentially reduce the risk of having a positive margin, meaning cancer cells coming to the edge of where it was cut out. So in our data, our risk of recurrence or positive margins is about 5%. Um, which uh, is remarkable when you compare that to other institutions in the area when doing the standard lumpectomy. And it makes sense because you basically take out a lot more tissue. You might not just take out a small piece of tissue risking the cancer creeping up to the edge of what you've taken out, but now you can take out uh, up to you know, 20 to 50 percent of the breast if the woman has large enough breasts. And so when doing so, you're a lot more likely to get it all out in one, in one operation versus multiple operations. And I understand that there are, this is a very specialized procedure 
uh, that you're doing. And there are only about 20 or so surgeons um, who have this special training. And that you recently, uh, the two of you um, were off um, in Chicago uh, teaching more surgeons from around the world to do that. Um, what was that experience like? It's a blessing. It's it's remarkable that you can uh, teach others to help women uh, the way we have been doing. And you recognize there's so many barriers out there and there's so many women that are going without these types of techniques. And to be able to teach other surgeons uh, how great this can be, you can tell that they're so um, happy to be given this information because in turn they'll be able to help so many other women out there, which is just great that one day of education and and the lectures that we go through, you know that there's going to be thousands of women that are, are benefiting from this. Yeah, this, this is really an important health issue, I think, in the United States right now with regards to the adoption of oncoplastic surgery. I think our societies through the American Society of Breast Surgeons, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, and the, also the American College of Surgeons, they're trying to educate doctors, breast surgeons, general surgeons, and plastic surgeons using courses and training models uh, to basically adopt this technique. You see, the Europeans have adopted this for decades. And so what we're doing, what Sam and I are doing here in, in New England, um, while unfortunately relatively rare, is common in Europe. And with that, all the data of oncologic safety, cancer safety, long-term reconstruction, how women perceive themselves, has all been established. And oncoplastics is an, an, an acceptable, safe, and really desirable option when being treated for breast cancer. And our societies now, unfortunately, decades after, have, have acknowledged that. So they send people like uh, Sam and, uh, and myself to go and teach courses to people in Chicago who who actually not only come from other parts of the United States, but also come from the Middle East. They come from um, Asia. They come from South America, where those doctors also want to know these techniques for breast conservation. I think it's absolutely essential for us not to try to um, not teach, um, and rather than being competitive, understand it's, it's our obligation, it's our mission to not only offer it to folks uh, in Melrose or in Boston, but also offer it to folks everywhere in the country and try to spread the knowledge as much as we can. And before we close, I think anyone who has met either of you very quickly understands just how personalized the care is that you provide. Um, can you each touch upon that for a moment, uh, Dr. Chatterjee? Yeah, I, you know, being a plastic surgeon and an oncologist, I get the best of both worlds. You have patients who come in who are absolutely frightened. Their families are frightened. They think they're going to die. And you, you, you hold their hand and you reassure the family members that they're not. You know, most patients have early stage breast cancer. And not only are they not going to die, they always worry that they're going to be permanently scarred because they, they Google breast cancer and they get this um, large amount of photos and horrific outcomes because not, not, not only do you see the good things, but you see the complications in pictures. So your job is to counsel them, calm them down, tell them that everything will be all right and to have them trust you all in the first one hour visit. But what I find fascinating is this journey that you have with the patients and their families, you become their family. So you guide them, you take care of them, you, they're entrusting to you uh, with their lives. And potentially, and most often, you cure them of this horrible disease. And not only that, but you follow them um, for years after, if not all their life. So you know, the favorite part, you know, we're surgeons, we like the operating room, but I think breast cancer surgeons are unique because not only do they like the operating room, but they truly value the, the before surgery and also the after surgery interactions that they have with patients. You get a hug from the family members, a thank you. Um, two weeks after telling them that they're free of cancer, when they look at their breasts and see that the oncoplastic operation has not scarred them and potentially they'll have a completely different view of how good they look now. And they're surprised about that, which is a shame from past surgeries, but we've managed to get there right now. Those things are, are truly magnificent. I didn't anticipate that when taking this journey with Sam and Uncle Plastics, but I think the patients and their families' reactions long-term make it all the worth it. And Dr. Nardella? So it's so important that we treat people the way they want to be treated. My wife would tell me this, that this is the most important aspect of care, is asking them what they want. And thankfully, with our partnership with Tufts Medical Center and Dr. Chatterjee, we can offer options. And the option is not just a standard lumpectomy with a indent in the breast or a mastectomy, 
but we can offer more advanced techniques such as oncoplastic surgery and really talk with the patient as well as the family and say, what is important to you? Is it getting back to work early or is it your aesthetics or is it your large breast size and you want to be smaller because you've always had back pain or do you really not want breast reconstruction or if you do have a mastectomy, is it an implant or would you like your own tissue? So all these things are just so important in terms of taking care of a patient and things that we ask them and make sure that we teach treat everybody differently, that not every patient is treated the same. And I think that's what shines about the program that we've created, is that we truly care about what women are going through. And we want to make sure that you feel supported and that you have the decision and that we support your decision. We'll do the best to help you. And not only that, getting through it as it comes in different forms. You know, There's one thing being cured of the cancer. There's another thing seeing yourself as whole after surgery. But doing this operation in one stage using their own tissue gets them back into their everyday lives much faster do than doing a huge mastectomy and putting foreign objects in or doing big flaps. So, you know, I've seen patients, we both shared patients, Sam, where these patients come in and say, I, listen, I'm a musician. I need to get back to my livelihood. I need to get back to being a mom. And I have obligations and this cancer is going to destroy those. We do our best to get her and the family back to normalcy. And I think that's what's the beauty of the way we treat our patients. Great. Dr. Salvatore Nardello, surgical breast oncologist and medical director at the Melrose Wakefield Breast Health Center. And Dr. Abhishek Chatterjee, surgical oncologist and chief of the division of plastic surgery at Tufts Medical Center and associate professor of surgery at Tufts University School of Medicine. Thank you both for being here. Thank Th you. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. If you enjoyed this podcast or have feedback for us or want to suggest future topics, please drop us a note at community at melrosewakefield.org. The Healthy Podcast is co-produced by Melrose Wakefield Healthcare and our good friends at Wakefield Community Access Television. For more information, listings of community events and lectures, or to find a doctor, visit melrosewakefield.org. All content heard on the Healthy Podcast was created for informational purposes only. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or qualified provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition.